During the days of the Trump presidency, the media and the Democrats never missed an opportunity to dunk on them, especially when it came to foreign policy. Do you remember? That press conference was the single most embarrassing performance by an American president on the world stage that he had ever seen. Why do you say this is the single most embarrassing blunder President Trump has made on the world stage since taking office? Donald Trump embarrasses America on the world stage, and he does it repeatedly. And there's a real cost to that. What's funny about this criticism is that Trump was actually very successful on the world stage. He cut peace deals in the Middle East and the Balkans. He calmed down the North Korean dictator, smashed the ISIS caliphate, took out al-Baghdadi, Soleimani, made our NATO partners pony up more money for the alliance, forecasting how Russian pipelines were weakening German resolve, and confronted China on trade. Trump was tough, and the media hated him for it. So when Joe Biden was elected, America was back. When President Biden says America is back, He's right. This is why Joe Biden ran for president, because he wanted to strengthen the transatlantic alliance. He wanted to take America's democratic ideals abroad. It is a neck snapping change of pace in terms of both style and substance in this White House. And as you heard the president announce today, the United States of America is back. Boy, were they wrong. Since the day Biden took office, he's failed us on foreign policy. Southern border, wide open. Who knows who's coming in? His Afghanistan withdrawal, complete disaster. 13 Marines were killed. North Korea firing off missiles like never before. And Russia's waging a war in Europe. So we can't even count on the president to get through a press conference without saying the wrong thing. Other countries are noticing now how weak Biden is, even our allies. We told you a couple months ago that Saudi Arabia didn't answer the phone when Joe Biden called. After protecting the kingdom for decades, the Saudis turned their backs on us when we needed more oil production. Didn't even pick up the phone. And now we know why. Apparently, they've been a little busy producing TV skits like this one. But the crisis in Africa, yeah, Russia, yeah, Russia. And I want to talk about the uh, president of Russia, uh, Putin. Yeah, Putin. Putin, listen to me. I have a very important message to you. The message is... Yikes. This doesn't make air without the approval of the crown prince. The world's gas station thinks our president's a laughingstock. It's not good for business. So much for America being back. That's odd because Kamala said foreign policy was easy. It's all about relationships. You know, Joe is, I, I love talking with Joe about a lot of these issues. And, you know, Joe, he, I think he said it quite well. He says, you know, foreign policy, it might sound complicated, but really it's relationships. So just think about it as relationships. And so we know this in our personal and professional relationships. <laughs> Carl Rove is a Fox News contributor. Do you see this skit? from the Saudis is significant because I do. Yeah, I think it's representative of a problem that we've got in the region. And it's not because of personal relationships. It's because of actions that we have taken that they don't like. We've cut back the military assistance they think is vital. We've engaged in negotiations with Iran, their arch enemy, to restart the so-called nuclear deal, which they see as a sure path to a nuclear weapon to, to a nation that has declared its intention to not only destroy the state of Israel, but to recapture the holy sites inside Saudi Arabia. And then we have been um, you know, less than supportive in their mind of their fight against the Houthi rebels in Yemen. So, and, and then there's also the issue of the murder of Khashoggi and the Washington, the Washington Post reporter uh, that's sort of looming back there. But I think the bigger issues are these three, and they feel like the new administration in the last year and a half has not been working with them, but is working against the interest of their country, and they don't under, understand why. They think of themselves as a strong ally, and they know that we want help from them on, on energy issues, and they can't understand why we have, to, on, on all these big issues, Yemen, Iran nuclear deal and military assistance to Saudi Arabia have been less than forthcoming in this administration. So Joe flies to Iowa today to, I guess, blend a little more ethanol in the gas 
of the American public, I think it brings down the price of the pump maybe a penny or two. And then a bird pooped on him, Carl. So I think this just means that's good luck for the president because blaming Putin hasn't brought him any luck at all, has it? No, it hasn't. And look, please, I mean, gas prices were going up before February 24th in the invasion of Ukraine. And we and we were all hurting because of that. In fact, they've moderated here in the last few days, the last week or so. So the idea of we're going to blame all the problems of the transitory inflation <laughs> on Putin uh, is just, I mean, it, they're digging in the hole deeper. American people look at that and say, who do you think we are, idiots? Of course, there may be some impact from the invasion of Ukraine, but this stuff was happening long before that all happened, and you kept telling us it was going to go away. So um, the, the administration has, has got bad messaging, and, uh, and it's because they got a lousy message to sell. All right, Carl Rove, I'm going to let you go because I have a big, uh, a big window into my soul that I need to share with the American people. Thank you so they much. They can't wait. The architect. They can't wait. Thank you Thank so you, sir. much. <laughs> Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.